ان الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كلام الله وخير الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته last week we were looking at the first surah to be revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam بعد الهجرة after the migration of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam which means this was the first surah al madaniyah the first Medina surah and the surah we looked at the first Medina surah to be revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam we looked at the fadail the excellence and the virtues of this surah and that surah was surah al baqarah and we mentioned some of the virtues of this surah and there are many, many great virtues and excellences of this surah. Who could remind me of some of the excellence of Surah Al-Baqarah from last week? Now, Who could remind me of some of the excellences of Surah Al-Baqarah? Now, Jazakallah khairan. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said about the last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah, اقرؤوا هاتين آيتين اللتين في آخر سورة البقرة فإن ربي أعطانهما من تحت العرش that read the last two verses of سورة البقرة for verily my Lord he gave me these two verses from under his عرش under the throne of Allah سبحانه وتعالى what the other verses of سورة البقرة we read last week نعم Jazakallah khairan. The magicians or people that engage in sorcery cannot memorize Surah Al-Baqarah. Another excellence of Surah Al-Baqarah we mentioned last week was the saying of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that Yawm Al-Qiyamah, the Qur'an will be brought forth and the people of the Qur'an, taqdumuhum, and they'll be led forward by what? Surah Al-Baqarah and Surah Ali Imran. Ka'annahuma ghamamatan. They will come Yawm Al-Qiyamah as two ghamam, as two clouds, or two dark shades, or two sets of birds or flocks of birds that will share them Yom Qiyamah. To hajjan an ashabiha, that they will argue of, on behalf of the people of Baqarah and Ali Imran. So this is from the excellence of Surah Al-Baqarah. And there are the many excellences which you didn't mention. For example, Atwal Ayah, the greatest, oh sorry, the longest verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is where? Surah Al-Baqarah. The greatest verse in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is where? Surah Al-Baqarah, Ayat Al-Kursi. Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hay al-qayyum. So we looked at the virtues and the excellence of Surah Al-Baqarah. Then we looked at the first ayah, not to be revealed from Surah Al-Baqarah, but from the, the first verse to have what? Sabab al-Nuzul, a cause of revelation. Because what we're looking at now is, not every single verse, but those that have a what? A cause of revelation. Yeah, Abu Abdullah. Tell him to keep him quiet. So, the first verse we looked at, the Asabab al Nuzul, was the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Baqarah verse 79. Who remembers what we looked at last week? The first verse. For wayilun lilladina yaktubun al kitaba bi aidihim. Woe unto those who write down the book bi aidihim with their hands. Thumma yaquluna hadha min indillah. And then they say, this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا In order to buy with it or purchase with it a small price. So this is the first verse we looked at. Then we looked at the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the second to be revealed, the سَبَبُ nuzul was the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, وَلَمَّا جَاءَهُمْ كِتَابٌ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ When a book comes to them from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, مُصَدِّقٌ That affirms that which was with them, or that which is with them, وَكَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلِ And before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this to them, يَسْتَفْتِحُونَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا 
They used to claim that they're going to be victorious above the disbeliever from the Mushikin or the people of where? Of Medina. That a prophet is going to come, and that prophet is who? The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When that which came to them, they knew and they recognized kafarubi. They disbelieved in it. This disbelief in it and denying the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, it also led them to deny or have hatred to the Prophet, not only the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, but who else? Those, the one that reveals the Quran to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the one that exposes their plots, their lies, their kitmanul ilm, they hide in the knowledge. And who is that? Jibreel alayhi salam. So the third ayah we looked at was the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, قُلْ مَنْ كَانَ عَدُوًّا لِجِبْرِيلِ Say whoever is an enemy to Jibreel. That's the three ayahs we looked at. We have sabab nuzul On to the end of the ayah. And that this week, بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى We say we're going to look at the lessons we could take from these ayat. The lesson, the durus. Because as we said, Surah Al-Baqarah is divided into how many main categories? How many main categories? Jazakallah khairan. Five main categories. But the lessons from Baqarah, some ulama have counted them to be 47. That they take the ayats in groups. Groups of ayat. So the lessons are 47. So based on these lessons, we're going to look at the ayat, or based on the ayat, the lessons we will get from Baqarah. So based on the verse first, which is woe unto those, because whale means what? Woe. Does whale have another meaning? Whale. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, for wailun lil musalleen. The ulama, they say, wailun is translated as what? Woe. Right? Has another meaning. They say, wailun wadin fi jahannam. That whale is a valley in the hellfire. That is so hot, the rest of the hellfire, they seek refuge from that part of the hellfire to show the seriousness and the gravity of kitabah, writing and claiming from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a hadith, مَنْ كَذَبَ عَلَيَّ مُتَعَمِّدًا فَلْيَتَبَوَّ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ النَّارِ Whoever intentionally lies on me, let him take his seat in the hellfire. So wail is a curse, woe, and also what? Fire. And many of us who have to be careful, especially today being, alhamdulillah, your mujumaa. You receive so many reminders. If you say this durood, you say this dua, you see the Prophet in your sleep. And many of us think, you know what, we're not doing it intentionally. However, there's a hadith of the Prophet in which he said, Kafa bil mar'i an yuhadithu bi kullu ma yas, bi kulli ma yasma. It's enough for a man to become a liar. To do what? To narrate every single thing which he hears. It makes you a liar. So every time someone falls a hadith to you, no reference, no authentication, for the all the time, kafa bil mar'i kathiban. It's enough to make you a liar, to narrate and transfer every single thing which you hear. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَوَيْلٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابِ So what are the durus we learn from this lesson, from this ayat? الدَّرْسُ الْأَوَّلِ For those taking notes. The first lesson, that فِي هَذَا الدَّرْسْ بَيَانٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ that in this ayah is a lesson for the believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to have any hope or much hope for the Yahud, the Jews to believe. Because some of the ahbar, their scholars, their rabbis, they heard the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from before. And then they distorted the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And how do we know this? We said last week, to understand a verse, what must you do? If you want to understand a verse, what must you do to understand that verse? What did we mention? You look at the verse before it and the verse after it. What is the verse that came before this, uh, before this verse? What is the verse before this verse? Yeah, Abdullah, you memorize Baqarah, right? What is the verse before this verse? Huh? Before this verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَوَيْدٌ لِلَّذِينَ يَكْتُبُونَ الْكِتَابَ بِأَيْدِيهِمْ It's difficult to go backwards for most people in a verse. But subhanAllah, from the hifz, from the memorization, those who have strong memorization, they could go back. From the hifz of those who recite the Qur'an constantly, they will know where the page starts, where it ends, roughly. They could even tell you the page numbers. So the ayah that came before this is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, أَفَطَّتُ مَعُونَ and 
Do you have any hope they're going to believe in you? وَقَدْ كَانَ فَرِيقٌ مِّنْهُمْ يَسْمَعُونَ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ And a group of them have heard the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ يُحَرِّفُونَ And then they distort it on purpose after they understood the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Al-Yahudu from Fatiha, we said what is the attributes? They're maghdub alayhim. Allah's anger is upon them for this reason. But we said not only the Yahud, the Jews, who else? Whoever follows the attributes or characteristics is maghdub alayhim. So whoever takes the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, yuharrifuna, and distorts the, distorts the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, maghdub alayhi kathalik. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger is upon him. So that's the first lesson. And why is it so? Not to have much hope in somebody that's distorted the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, to show us how we should take a lesson from the seerah from this ummah, he said, Al-bid'a ahabbu ila shaytan min al-ma'asiyah. That bid'a is more beloved to the shaytan than ma'asiyah, than sinning. Why? Because the person that does bid'a, it could be uh, drinking alcohol, fornication, adultery, stealing, he may repent. Most people that engage at the top of bid'a innovation, they don't repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they legislate and they justify that which they're doing. The ones that sin doesn't justify it. Jayid? So you have you have no hope in them believing. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this is the first lesson. So this is the danger of bid'a. That sometimes we see people doing sins, engaging in disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We take a strong stance and we should do so. But when we see innovations, we don't take that strange stance. Yet innovations is more dangerous than ma'asiyah disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, another lesson is that Al-Yahud, akharuna minhum muftaruna ala Allah. The ayah that we're reading now, another group of them, what do they do instead of distorting? Yaktubun. They write down the words of Allah and claim it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. طيب, so the Yahud, they have two attributes. And whatever follows them from this Ummah, you find these same attributes from the people of Bid'a. And what are these two things? Al-Kitaba wa Tahrif. Writing down and also what? Distorting. Writing down and distorting. Are there people from this Ummah, Yaktubuna, that write what is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? They are. The Quran, you don't find more than one version, right? So what did they write down that's not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? The sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the sunnah is what? It's revelation, it's wahi. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى It doesn't speak from his own desire. إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحِيٌّ يُوحَى You have people today that write down that which is not from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they say it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is from the attributes of the Yahud. So we may be saying every غَيْرُ سِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ نَعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِ The path of those you bestowed your favor upon. But the actions of a person intentionally writing down something and claiming it's from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it's not from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is from the actions, not of those Allah has put his favors upon but those maghdub alayhim, Allah's anger is upon. The second attribute, and you see this in tawa'i from the ummah, certain groups of the ummah, is a tahrif. Memorize this terminology, tahrif, which is distorting. In some books of aqeedah, mistakenly people call it ta'wil, to distort. But ta'wil is okay. This ta'wil ru'ya, interpretation of dreams. This ta'wil al-ayah. But the terminology Allah uses is what? Tahrif. You find some book of aqeedah, they say ta'wil. But ta'wil is not the same as tahrif. Tahrif means to distort. This is the second attribute of al-Yahud. And this attribute of tahrif al-kalim, to distort a word, it falls into two categories. And you find these two categories present even in the Ummah. I'm going to give some examples. The first category of Tahrif, Ayyuh al-Akh al-Libi, MashaAllah, he's writing. The first category of a Tahrif, distorting, is Tahrif al to distort the wording. The second category, Tahrif al ma'na to distort the meaning. So the first category is what? Tahrif al to distort the wording. And the second category is what? Tahrif al ma'na to distort the meaning. As for distortation of the wording, there are four types of distortation of wording. Today's class is going to be a bit of a heavy class, but it is very important. 
Because sometimes people say, don't make it too complicated, difficult. But these points, as you will see, are very important. The first, tahrif al love. We say four is how many categories? Four. The first category of distortion of word is ziyada fil love, to increase upon the wording. The second category is what? Nuqsan, to decrease from the wording. The third category is what? Taghir haraka i'rabiyya, to change the haraka. Haraka in the Quran or in Arabic is the fatha kasra dhamma. Fatha kasra dhamma. Because the fatha kasra dhamma has what kind of consequences? Grammatical consequences. The Arabic is not like English. The Arabic fatha kasra dhamma changes the whole meaning. So the third type is what? To change the fatha kasra dhamma. And the last type is what? To change something, tahrik haraka, ghayra i'rabiyya. To change the haraka that has no grammatical consequences. So we're going to give some examples from Aqidah. The first example is tahrif of the grammatical meaning or grammatical haraka. Change the fatha kasra dhamma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, this tahrif al love or ziyada to increase the wording, but we're going to give from the examples, example of changing the fatha kasra dhamma. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَكَلَّمَ اللَّهُ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Musa taklima with speech. كَلَّمَ اللَّهُ أَهْلُ بِدْعَى In their qira'a, they say, كَلَّمَ اللَّهَ مُوسَى تَكْلِيمًا What's the difference between كلم الله موسى and كلم الله موسى? Because things that like موسى, ليلى, عيسى, there's no فتح كسر الضم at the end of it, right? جيد? But what's the difference between كلم الله موسى, كلم الله موسى? بارك الله فيك. If you say كلم الله, Allah, لفظ الجلالة, فاعل is the doer of the action. Why? Because of الضم, مرفوع بالضم. If you say كلم الله لفظ الجلالة the word Allah مفعول به Musa spoke to Allah not Allah spoke to Musa because they reject the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaking they reject this attributes and this is why it's important not for us just to learn the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understand the Arabic language not to speak the Arabic language necessarily but understand the language because many of our children, when we ask them this question, even if it makes a mistake in, in reciting, he will not realize the grave error in that mistake. So this is by changing the i'rab. Another example of a change in i'rab, and I'm going to ask Abu Rayhana this one, inshallah ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ Your Lord is going to come. وَالْمَلَكُ صَفًّا صَفًّا and you'll come Yom Qiyamah with the angels in rows and rank. وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ جَيِّدْ وَجَاءَ رَبُّكَ أَهْلُ بِدْعَى They read it as وَجَاءَ رَبَّكَ What's the difference here? رَبُّكَ U is the what? The doer of the action. وَجَاءَ رَبَّكَ means they will come to your Lord with the angels. Because they say to compare Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala having the attributes of coming is comparing to the creation. So they ma'attala, they negate the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they could not do so illa bimada except by distorting it. So they say, Waja'a Rabbaka, they will come to your Lord. They will come to your Lord. Just look at that little difference between Rabbu and Rabba to show the importance for us to understand and learn the Arabic language. It's when you learn the Arabic language, you understand and you appreciate the Quran even more. Tayyib. So this is tahrif in that way. And it's tahrif of ma'na, distortion of meaning. And one distortion of meaning is the saying of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you notice, they're all linked to what? Aqeedah, beliefs. Ar-Rahmanu ala al-Arshi istawa. So here they don't change the word. They'll say, Ala al arshi stawa, ala al arshi stawla. It took over the throne. But in the Arabic language, istawa, especially it's combined with ala, istawa ala, it doesn't have any other meaning except what? To rise above something. Like the ayah of the dua for getting in your car, the ayah. 
إِذَا اسْتَوَيْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ وَتَقُولُ When you get, يعني when you take over your riding animal, when you get on top of your riding animal, when you get on top of the riding animal, وَتَقُولُ سُبْحَانَ الَّذِي سَخَّرَ لَنَا هَذَا But if you say اِسْتَوْلَى That meaning fasid. Why is it corrupted belief? If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gained authority over the throne, what does that mean? Somebody else had authority over the throne before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ala Allah an dhalika uluwan kabira. So this is tahrif fil ma'na. So the ulama, they speak. They say, which is worse? Is it the one that does tahrif of ma'na or tahrif of the love? Which one do you think is worse? The one that changes the wording or the one that changes the meaning? The ulama, they say that the people that change the wording, they are worse from one, in one way. The one that changed the word is. And the ones that change the meaning, they're worse from another angle. As for the one that changed the wording, what did they do when they changed the wording? Why are they worse in one instance? Once you change the wording, you also do what? You change the meaning. So you've done both. Once you've changed the word, you've automatically done what? You've changed the meaning anyway. So they combine two crimes. As for the people that change the word, and some of the ulama, they say they're worse from another angle. So they're equal. How are they worse from another angle? Awam and the juhal, the general people, and the ignorant amongst the Muslims, alhamdulillah. If you come to this message now, you say, Maliki yawmi deen. They're okay. You say, Maliki yawmi deen. They have an issue in their heart. Because they used to hear what? Maliki yawmiddin. They're not aware of the different modes of recitation. And that's why they say if they're not aware of it, you shouldn't recite recitation they're not aware of. Because it puts doubts in their heart. So the general people, if I was to say, Qul huwallahu ahada, they'll automatically reject it. So the ones that change the meaning, they're more evil. Because it's not noticeable. It's not from another angle. If you change the fatha kasra or the wording, automatically there will be an uprise. But if you change the meaning, as most amongst the general people say, this is what this means, they don't pay attention to it. So they say they're worse from one perspective and these are worse from another perspective. So at tahrif and you find this, subhanahu malik al-Qudus, amongst the people of innovation. Why do you find amongst the people of innovation? Ahmed al-Najmi said, al-bid'a, innovation, mustaqbaha, fitratan wa aqlan. Innovations and inventing religion by your fitrah, which Allah has created you, is something disliked to you. By your fitrah. And the worst type of bid'ah is what? Shirk. So the fitrah Allah Ta'ala has created you with, you automatically hate it. But you have to beautify that bid'ah. He said, لِذَلِكَ يُزَيِّنُ أَهْلَ bid'ah." For that reason, the people of bid'ah, they have to beautify the bid'ah. So you find Diwali, if you understand what Diwali is about. Disgusting. But how do you beautify it? With lights and sweets. If you read the Qasida, the thing they read during Mawli, the shirk and the kufr in that thing, but how do they beautify it? Pilau, rice, uh, sweets, lights all around. That's why they beautify this bid'ah. Because naturally, mustaqbaha is something which is hated and disliked to you. So they have to yuharrifuna. They have to twist and turn to beautify that bid'ah. So this is from the traits of al-Yahud at-Tahrif. So now I want to look at a couple of things. The first I want to look at, inshallah ta'ala, is why at-Tahrif? We've mentioned one reason. What are the consequences of this Tahrif? Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because now we reach the stage of Medina, and the seerah is supposed to take lessons from it. This is his first dealing with the people of what? The people of the book. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, You're going to follow from this ummah, the sunnah, the ways of those who came before you. From the Jews and the Christians. Even if one of them was to enter the hole of a lizard, you follow him in entering it. So when we read the seerah, we have to know, in order to avoid these pitfalls, we have to know what are these pitfalls. So what are the causes of a person doing tahrif? And what are their categories? When it comes to the Yahud, the categories of those who did tahrif are the following. Number one, yashtaruna. Allah Ta'ala said in the ayah, لِيَشْتَرُوا بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا 
to buy some worldly purchase, some worldly intentions. So the Yahud, they do it for what intention? Worldly intention. Likewise, when you find a person from the Ummah, everything in his deen or in his calling is financially related or financial benefit. You find you harifun al kalim. They do tahrif. If it's financial related, even if he claims to be calling to the Sunnah, that I am not going to say this because commercially it's not viable. Commercially, hadith lectures is in trend. So, for example, Brother Suleiman might say, Look, Akhi, I invite you to Nigeria to give a lecture. And he's invited him to give a lecture. And he says to me, Do not go to such and such and such and such a masjid. Because in such and such a masjid, there's a grave in that masjid. In fact, you can't call it a masjid. But yet, commercially, financially, it's what? It's viable. So I go to that masjid. That's why you find, because of these dunya issues, that's why people, you have rifun al kalim. So when I was in Sri Lanka, for example, the majority of people, alhamdulillah, the da'wah of tawheed has spread so much, even when I take a taxi, I'm like, stop at this masjid, I want to pray. Like, no, you can't pray there. I'm like, why? Just a normal taxi driver. Like, no, there's a grave in that masjid. The knowledge is spread amongst them. Some of the taxi drivers will stop their car at the time of salah and pray outside the masjid, on the streets, because the da'wah of tawheed has spread. So when I went to one of these masajid, why have you got this thing here? They say, look, what they call the ziarium or ziarium, it brings a lot of money. Because when people go there, when you, you know those where those graves are, what do you think people, people are putting in gold, silver, money? So worldly benefits. These people that say to you, instead of you making dua for yourself or doing ruqya upon yourself, I'm not saying anyone will tie for ruqya, but they say, you know what, I'll make the dua for you. I'll take you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you. يَشْتَرُونَ بِهِ ثَمَنًا قَلِيلًا So this is the first reason, a dunya. The second reason is nifaq, hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. Because then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he speaks about the munafiqun. What did he say? Allah ta'ala says in the Quran, وَإِذَا لَقُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا قَالُوا آمَنَّا Surah Al-Baqarah. When they see those who believe, they say, we believe. وَإِذَا خَلَوْا إِلَىٰ شَيَاطِينِهِمْ قَالُوا إِنَّا مَعَكُمْ And when they go back to their shayateen, their devils, they say, we are with you. In this ayah, who are the shayateen? The Yahud. Because these are the ones they used to go back to. So they'll go back to the Yahud in Medina, and they say, don't worry, we are with you. So the shayateen or the munafiqeen is who? The Yahud. And whatever follows their path. And some of these people themselves were Yahoo. They will pretend they have Iman, faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do we see this straight in the Ummah? Yes, most definitely. So if you look at some of the astray groups in the Ummah, what were they in reality? They were munafiqun wa zanadiqa. They were munafiqun. So when you study ilmul hadith, the science of hadith, and you wonder why is there fabrication of hadith? The first reason what we mentioned here, to show the traits of following the Jews. What's the first trait? Or first reason, dunya. When you go to Mustala al-Hadith, and you find out, why did people fabricate hadith? One of the people that fabricated hadith, he said, I did it for dunya. So he fabricated the whole hadith that the Prophet sallallahu wasallam said, eat melons, for verily eating melons is good for you, because he used to sell melons. Dunya. The second reason which you mentioned now is what? an nifaqu hypocrisy. So the people of bid'ah, of innovation that are munafiqun that want to damage Islam from within, they fabricate hadith. So the ulama, they say, when the ulama mentions that Hamad ibn Zayd al-Azdi, naam, that this zindiq, he said, when they captured him, he said, wadu'atu, or afwan, not, this zindiq was said about him by Hamad ibn Zayd al-Azdi, that wadu'at, he said, وضعت الزنادق على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم أربعة عشر ألفا حديثا That a zanadiq, not a person of bid'a, heretics, a munafiq That's infiltrated the ummah in his time alone They fabricated upon the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم 14,000 hadith And that's why, wallahi, we have to thank our ulama That invented what? Al-Isnad The science of hadith That when that was introduced now, you can no longer lie what do you used to say to them? Semmulana rijalakum. Tell us your men. Who told you this hadith? And they had to be what they call silsila. They had to be a chain. And the chain is not just any chain. For example, thiqa is trustworthy. He's not a liar. But he has to be trustworthy in many ways. In his hifz, 
memorization in his kitaba, in his writing. Not only in his kitaba, likewise, he doesn't do a tadlis. A tadlis is, everyone knows you as what? Suleiman. But in order for people not to know who you really are, you say Abu Abdullah or Abu Mus'ab. It's not a lie, but it's the least. So they introduced the science of hadith. So he said, this is an adiq of 14,000 hadith. In this time alone, he said, Lama ukhida Abdul Karim, when one of the zanadiq, zindiq, was caught, Abdul Karim, Abi Awja, Muhammad ibn Sulaiman brought him forward. And in order for his neck to be chopped off, because this type of nifaq is major nifaq, a major bid'ah. So, he said, Wallahi, this is indeed. He said, By Allah, I swear, I have infiltrated you with 4,000 hadith which are invented upon the Prophet. This is the word of Munafiqun. And another word of Munafiqin, if you watch YouTube channels, they bring, what do you call it again? Rare opinions. You know, rare opinions that some ulama might have made a mistake in an opinion. So they bring you this weird, unusual opinion, and the ulama say, Man tatabba'a zalat al ulama. Where we follow the mistakes of the scholars, what do we end up becoming? A zindiq, a munafiq. So some of them did it as they were munafiqun. A sofa thalith, the next group of people, so we mentioned a group for dunya, a group for what, ya akhi? To support their madhab, their school of thought, or munafiqun, hypocrites. Afro, not so both school of thought, but hypocrites, zindiq. Another group of people that do this is due to what? Ignorance. Due to what? Ignorance. How do we understand that? The ayah, which we're looking at is what? For waylun lillazina yaktubuna al-kitabi aydihim, thumma yaquluna hadha min indi allahi lashtaru bihi thamana qalila. For waylun lahum ma katabat aydihim, wa waylun lahum, wa waylun lahum ma yaksibun. Before the ayah, what was before this ayah? Again. Wa min hum? Some of them are illiterate, unlettered people. They don't really understand the book. Except for wishful thinking. Pure ignorance. And that's why when we say to Allah Ta'ala, We don't only ask Allah the path of those who is bestowed his favor upon, but not the path of those whose anger is upon who else? Those who are astray. Those who are what? Astray. And what those are straight, the Christians and whoever follows them, that they act without what? Without knowledge. So some of the people was ignorance. They were ubad, they were people that worshipped Allah, abstained from the dunya. But they were what? Ignorant people. So they worship Allah, but not what? That knowledge. So when you ask Allah, Ihdina Suratul Mustaqim, you ask him for two things. Amalu Salih, Afwan Ilm, wa Amal Salih. Knowledge and righteous actions. Because Allah arsala rasulahu bil huda wa deen al-haq. He sent his message with two things. Al-huda wa deen al-haq. Al-huda is ilm nafi' beneficial knowledge. Wa deen al-haq is what? Righteous deeds, correct deeds. So the juhal, the ulama, they say about them, that this juhal, they invented a hadith because some of them, if you study Musallah al-Hadith, they say we saw people becoming preoccupied with knowledge of aqidah, knowledge of fiqh, and all these other things. And people, their heart softening was going away from them. Their heart was no longer soft. So what we used to do, we used to sit and get rewards by making up hadith that softens the heart of the people. So they'll sit in the masjid and invent a hadith, a da'ifa. And you might find this strange, you might find this weird. Does this happen in this time? I'm not going to mention the name of the book. When I was in Kenya, one brother studied in Yemen, a Somali brother, and he came to, he was a muhaddith. And one of these books, there's people that say go for 40, 30, whatever days, they have a book. He took that book out one day in the library. He said, if I was to do takhrij of this book, if I was to properly look at the hadith, which is sahih or, or, <laughs> from this book, the book will read through two pages. I used to read some unbelievable things in this book, in this book. And some of the people that go on such manhaj, because it's in their head, they say da'if hadith. I remember one day a brother went for, for one of these uh, lectures, and the person speaking, and he's jahil, he wanted to encourage the people to do good. Hope for Jannah, hope for Hur al He says, Subhanallah, brothers. The Hur al Subhanallah. Her lips is so sweet. If you kiss her, you get diabetes. <laughs> so now I don't know if that made you hope anyway. Once diabetes, subhanallah. Anyway, 
So, <laughs> this, some people, they invent a hadith. If you go to this book, for example, there's there a man. One day, he led his mother in salah. And I can't remember how many surahs of Baqarah, I think he read the whole Quran. And then he apologized. I don't know how you do that between Isha and Fajr. He apologized to his mother, like, I've been difficult upon you today. She said, difficult, what? I do this every single night. Stories, if you know, you know. Mass exaggeration. The intentions behind it are good, but this is why the reason people invent a hadith. The third reason. Another reason, those who do tahrif to support their madhab, their school of thought. So the way Ahlul Sunnah is, if you want to be a Sunni, tata'asan thumma tabni. You have principles. And then what do you do with those principles? You build on top of the principles. Some people already have their principles. And they do what? They put the, the other way around. Then they look for evidence to support their principle. Rather, you have foundation. And based on those foundations, you make principles. Some people already have their inclination. And you shouldn't be like that. They have their inclination towards a certain way, a certain group, a certain belief system. And then they build on top of that. That's another reason people tahrif will kill him. Now, the consequences of a tahrif, it's done 35 minutes. Can I get, have another five more minutes? Jayid. The consequence of tahrif, there are many consequences. From amongst it is what? It leads to stubbornness. That even when the truth comes to you, you don't want to accept the truth because of what you've written with your own hand or you distort, distort it. Another one of the consequences, it makes the what? A person a liar. Because they know, and lying is one of the worst of things. A believer may still do zina, but a believer doesn't do what? He doesn't lie. From the consequences is that it makes a person be amongst those Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's anger is upon. From the consequences is an nifaq. It leads to hypocrisy. From the consequences of tahrif al-kalim amma which we'll stop with inshallah ta'ala, is... That a person, the anbiya wa rusul and the righteous, he has an enmity towards them. Because constantly, 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 what are the anbiya doing? What are they doing? They're exposing you. And that's why the Jews, they hated who? Jibreel alayhi salam. And you hate righteous people and the people of righteousness that uphold the deen. The Prophet ﷺ said, in every single generation, there'll be a group of people to uphold this deen and defend it from the falsehood of the people of falsehood. And who are these people? The ulama, the scholars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahid Allahu annahu la ilaha illahu wal walaikatu wa ulul ilm. Allah bears witness that no deity worthy of worship but him. And the angels and the people of knowledge. So where is the enmity now formed to the people of knowledge? This is Surah Ali Imran, Sahih. Abdullah, Surah Al Imran. Yes? So a few ayats down, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna alladheena yakfuruna billah wa yaqtulun. Huh? Al Anbiya wa Nabiyyin. Wa yaqtulun Nabiyyina. Wa alladheena yakmuruna bil qisti min al nas. In the end, those who disbelieve in Allah, they fight the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they fight those who order with justice from the people. And what are the people that order from justice Allah ta'ala mentioned before this ayah? Ulul ilm, the people of knowledge. You start to hate the scholars from tahrif al kalim. And that's why the people that face the most war after the anbiya or rusul are who? The scholars. So ahlu bid'ah, the enmity they had towards who? Imam Ahmed rahimahullah ta'ala. Because of the, the, the fitna of what? The creation of the Quran. He was imprisoned. He was beaten and beaten and beaten. In fact, they said Imam Ahmed, rahimahullah ta'ala, they beat him so badly when they're unconscious that they cut a piece of his body and they put, I think it was a meat or some kind of poison in his body and sewed it up back again. And he became extremely ill. And one of the prisoners that witnessed it told him they had to cut it open. And there was no anesthetic, nothing, and pull that thing out again. Ibn Taymiyyah, rahimahullah ta'ala, because Ahlul Bid'ah, where did he die? In prison. And Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, when you read the seerah, Bagr Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, in prison, he was still doing what? He was still writing. Where was he writing? He was writing all over the walls. When they took away what he wrote on the walls with, he said, now you've killed me. Ibn Taymiyyah in his time in prison, he finished the Quran 60 times. 60 times in the, in the prison. 
So the, the, the people, Ahbar, the scholars, Ahlul Bid'a, they have such a war with them. They hate the scholars. And be careful of hating who? Scholars. Or backbiting scholars. Even if they fall into mistake. The greatest musibah in Tarawih, they made the Qunut. La tusibana fi deen. La taj'al akbar musibatina fi deenina. Don't make the greatest trial for us to be in our what? In our deen. If you have no respect to scholars, your musibah will end up being in your what? In your deen. People, most of straight people, they have no scholars. They don't respect scholars. Not that scholars are infallible, but respect scholars. Because when you reject them, you also reject what they which you carry from the truth. So the trace that leads to or the consequences is hating of Ahbar, the scholars. So we end with a short narration here, which is the narration of Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam. Abdullah ibn Salam was from the Ahbar of the Yahud, the scholars of the Jews. So he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَأَتَاهُ فَقَالْ إِنِّي سَائِلُكَ عَنْ ثَلَاثٍ لَا يَعْلَمُهُنَّ إِلَّا النَّبِيٍ This scholar of the Jews, he came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, I'm going to ask you three questions that nobody knows the answer to it except for what? A Prophet. قَالَ وَمَا أَوَّلُوا He said, what are they? He said, what is the first sign of the hour? What is the first food of the people of Jannah? What are the things, what causes a child to resemble his father or resemble the mother? So, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Jibreel. Jibreel just informed me of it. He said, فَقَالَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ Tell me. So when he said Jibreel had informed of it, Abdullah ibn salam what did he say to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? He said, ذَاكَ عَدُوُ الْيَهُودِ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةِ That is the enemy of the Jews from the angels. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ignored him and he continued. And he said, قَال He said, أَوَّلُ أَشَارَةِ السَّاعَةِ the first sign of the hour, or the potent sign of the hour is, a fire will come, تَحْشُرُ nas, a fire, فَنَارٌ تَحْشُرُ nas مِنَ الْمَشْرِكِ إِلَى الْمَغْرِبِ that will gather the people from the east to the west. And so the first food of the people of Jannah is like the liver, or يَأْكُلُهُ أَهْلُ Jannah, the liver of the fish, or the well. Uh, as for why the child will resemble the father, if the water of the man comes out before the water of the woman, it resembles the womb, the father. And if the water of the woman precedes, it resembles his mother. Tayyib. So he said, after hearing these three answers, what did he say? He said, Ashadu an la, Ashadu annaka Rasulullah. I bear witness to your message of Allah. Thumma qal, and then he said to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ya Rasulullah, inna al-Yahud qawmun buhut. The Yahud are people, they're treacherous and they're liars. He said to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that if they know about my Islam, they will speak lies against me. So the Yahud came to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they entered. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, this was in his home. He said, Ayyu rajulin fiikum Abdullah ibn Salam. What kind of person is Abdullah ibn Salam? What kind of person is he? They had the Yahud, they say, A'lamuna, A'lamuna, Naam, is the most knowledgeable of us. Wa ibnu A'lamina. The son of the most knowledgeable. وَأَخْيَارُنَا And the best of us. And the son of the best of us. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then asked them after they made these praises about him. أَفَرَأَيْتُمْ إِنْ أَسْلَمَ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ What do you think if Abdullah was to become a Muslim? They said, أَعَاذَهُ اللَّهِ May Allah protect him from that. We seek refuge in Allah from that. مِنْ ذَلِكَ So Abdullah ibn Salam came out and he said in front of the Yahud, أَشَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَى اللَّهِ وَأَشَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ Immediately the Yahud, they say, you see this one? Sharruna is the worst of us. وَإِبْنُ شَرِّنَا And he's the son of the worst of the people amongst us. وَوَقَعُوا فِي So likewise, you find the ulama. When they give fatawa, that's in accordance with what's upon my desire, MashaAllah, Tabarakallah. But it gives a fatwa that politically, I'm speaking politically now, is not According to his desire, Wallahi, ulama as salatin government scholars, Sahara to Fir'aun, the magicians of Fir'aun, and so on and so forth. Inshallah ta'ala, the next week, we're going to look at the next ayah. We're going through three ayah very quickly, as a brother pen pointed out. The next ayah is going to be Sabab Nuzul of Taghir Qibla, the change of the Qibla. We're going to go through that in details and then go to the seerah about what, what that meant, the Taghir of the Qibla. Subhanakallah, bihamdika, shadu an la ilaha, and Any questions, inshallah?